Hi guys, I just wanted to let you know that I've recently started a Patreon account. Here you'll be able to see every historic site I travel to, my research which goes into my videos, and medieval armour that I make during my apprenticeship as an armourer. There is no obligation, I've only put one tier on my page which is just $5 to help support the channel. Click the link on screen or in the video description, and cheers! <laughs> Over the next year, I am going to be building my own historically authentic armoured handgunner outfit from the late 15th century. Consisting of a full steel harness, helmet, sidearm, belt configuration, hand cannon, and a few other little interesting add-ons. I will be showing you all the evolution of my kit as it is being made, and discussing the information and evidence found during my studies. Firstly, let's begin with an intriguing little item, which were used by hand cannoneers, yet you probably didn't even know about. Interestingly, there is a certain item that can be seen time and time again in contemporary artwork from the 15th century, yet is completely neglected on the reenactment fields in the modern day. This curious wooden construction is called a mantlet. It is a portable fortification for archers, crossbowmen, and indeed hand gunners, often used to protect themselves while reloading. There doesn't seem to be much uniformity when it comes to mantlet designs. They range from small rectangular shields, suitable for a single person to hide behind, to great sections of walls where, if we are to trust the scale in the artwork, a whole retinue of troops could stand behind as they reload their ballistic weapons and negotiate the battlefield. The artwork often shows us that mantlets were a common gadget for ranged units, and seem to be found more so towards the 1400s and later artwork. However, they can also be seen in earlier depictions of sieges, suggesting that the mantlet was primarily a type of siege craft, used to safely move troops closer to the castle walls and for crossbowmen to get in range to snipe defenders from between the crenellations in relative safety. It would appear that mantlets were an item soldiers would often cobble together before battle, rather than carry with them on campaign, as they would be much too heavy and cumbersome. Despite this, a mantlet would also need to be light enough to mobilise around the battlefield where the projectile troops were needed, so these objects were most likely made of thin planks of wood, probably shoddily lashed together with wooden dowels or perhaps made of entwined wicker. Mantlets would generally be a disposable item due to their weight and size so the use of metal nails would be unlikely when constructing them. Either wicker or wooden planks with wooden dowels would be a more likely choice, as they were only expected to stop incoming projectiles such as arrows and crossbow bolts, rather than heavy artillery such as cannons. They would also pose as a deterrent for cavalry, which were one of the main counters to ranged units during medieval open battles. Contemporary artwork often shows cutouts in the mantlets, often as makeshift loopholes or arrow slits, mimicking the defendable features of a typical castle wall. The manuscripts often also show us an array of weapons being pointed outwards from these loopholes, such as spears, arrows and hand cannons. Much of the artwork we see depicts scenes of sieges, where multiple men are behind the wooden structures, which often feature wheels. You could be forgiving in assuming that these chariot-like constructions are for transporting soldiers around the battlefield, similar to the famous Hussite war wagons. However, in many depictions, you can see the soldiers at the back are clearly standing on the ground, suggesting that there is no floor to these portable structures, and they are, as we suspected, walls on wheels. During the latter half of the 15th century, hand cannons were entering a new experimental phase and were beginning to get more dangerous on the battlefield, and inevitably were subject to many tweaks and alterations in the attempt to fine-tune them against the armoured opponent. One invention that spun from this experimental period was the arquebus. The name arquebus has no definite specific meaning, but is often attributed to that of a heavy style of hand cannon, a significant step up from the typical cannon barrel on a stick, as this often featured a longer barrel with a larger stock to accompany it. The resulting side effect would be that the arquebus was typically a very heavy weapon, 
and as such would hinder the user substantially in open battle. The artwork clearly shows gun barrels poking through the loopholes, most likely resting on the wood to help support the weight, meaning the cannoneer can more easily aim the weapon and prevent fatigue for a longer period of time. It should be said that we see plenty of arquebuses being both held and used by the soldiers without the aid of a mantlet, so there were clearly versions of arquebuses that were light enough for unsupported use. As with the majority of medieval weapons, a lack of uniformity in design meant that hand cannons took on a variety of shapes and sizes, and so were difficult to put into defined groups. No doubt the larger, heavier arquebuses could pack more of a punch and have a capability of further range yet a lighter hand cannon could still be devastatingly effective at short range, while allowing the user to have the ability to easily fall back to safety after firing off a round into the enemy ranks. Contemporary artwork sometimes shows painted mantlets, featuring what we can assume is heraldry, a reflection of what we commonly see on shields and banners, which suggests that mantlets could also be used as a form of identification on the battlefield. While studying the various artworks which featured painted mantlets, I began wondering whether this was done where the hand cannoneers using the mantlets were mercenaries, so may not already be donning the colours of the side they are fighting on. As such, a mantlet painted in the heraldry of the lord or king who paid for the mercenary retinue of hand cannoneers would be an easy way to identify whose side the mercenaries were fighting on, however you would have to be in a specific situation where you could reliably source paint for this. Food for thought, considering that hand cannoneers were a highly sought after and expensive unit, and featured commonly throughout Western Europe during the entirety of the 15th century, which is where I'm focusing my research. In summary, we can compare the mantlet to the wooden stakes placed in front of the archers, such as those described at Agincourt in 1415. They provided an additional disposable line of defence to help protect specific units who were vital on the battlefield, yet clearly vulnerable if left in the open. While a measly wooden palisade wouldn't likely prevent an opponent from advancing through, they would certainly be an obstacle to slow the enemy down, which would be an ideal opportunity to fire off a few rounds into the encumbered opponent's ranks as they negotiate a path through the mantlets. Personally, I find mantlets fascinating in both their functionality and their simplicity. We all know that a well-seasoned career soldier on campaign would often come up with ingenious DIY inventions to help protect themselves and lessen their chances of death in combat, and the mantlet is a quick and easy item that can easily be built by a handful of soldiers working together in the camp in the evening and left behind or dismantled after the battle. Next year, once I have completed my own hand cannoneer's armour and have obtained my own functioning arquebus, I will also construct a mantler of my own as part of my kit, showcasing it during 2024's summer events such as Barnet and Tewkesbury. Be sure to say hi if you see me. And for now, thanks for watching. Oh, oh, oh.